in Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 it says the following and he said if you diligently heed my voice the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes I will put none of the diseases on you which I brought on the Egyptians I am the Lord who heals you somebody say amen, amen. healing is mentioned 138 times in the Bible one-fifth of the Gospels one-fifth of Jesus's ministry is healing first time healing mentioned in the Bible was when Abraham prayed for Abimelech it was interesting because Abraham actually had a problem in his own household and God expected him to pray for someone else in here we find something very interesting after Israel came out of Egypt and they started to complain and God warned them he told them he says if you diligently obey my voice if you pay attention to what I'm saying he says you will have really no disease and then he says in case you get a disease just heads up I'm Jehovah Rapha I'll heal you so I want you to see two things the principles of the kingdom bring divine health the power of the kingdom bring divine healing many of us will not need healing if we will obey the principles of the kingdom now a lot of the commandments of God if you read the Old Testament you'll find out these commandments didn't just have to do with morality of people it had to do with diet God was very specific make sure that they don't eat pork make sure they don't eat certain foods with blood there's a lot of actually diet laws in the Old Testament now if the Old Testament would have been written today the diet laws would be different the diet laws would be like this don't drink soda God will say you know thou shall not uh, eat more than three Krispy Kreme donuts a month the diet laws will be like this thou shall take 10 steps every single day the dietary laws would be like this thou shall drink half a gallon of water every single day the dietary laws would be like this thou shall burn more calories than thou consumeth because the the generation of that they didn't have processed foods and they were always active there was no cars and therefore most of the diet laws did not involve exercising it didn't involve not eating processed foods but it involved that generation and the struggles they had with the foods that they had and so God says if you obey the laws that I give you some of them are common sense God says you won't have the diseases that Egyptians had but in case you still get sick which probably will happen because you live in a broken world that is curses and demons he says I am going to introduce to you as a God who heals I want you to see God first doesn't introduce healing he first introduces health God first introduces health a lot of us will not need healing if we obey common sense laws of health because principles of the kingdom bring health now we live in a broken world you can be on a diet you can take the vitamins and you can watch your weight and you can watch your calories and burn as much as you consume and you can do all of that and still get sick because there's generational curses because there's demons and bacteria and everything and that's where God says I am your healer it's almost as God is saying if you ignore my commandments why do you even need to get healed you don't care about health it's very important we live in a world today it's it's crazy how overweight our generation is I know it's sensitive and I know some of you will get offended it's fine it's better to be offended than dead mm -hmm. and it's completely fine and I started to feel that about myself because after a particular time your metabolism you know it slows down you uh, you less active but you consume more food it's kind of like putting gas in your car and you're barely driving it and every day you're pouring more gas and gas guess what's going to happen you're going to flood the garage not with the river of the glory of God with the gasoline and that's exactly what happens with our generation it's very important that we as Christians that we take care of our health there's common sense things like eating right like constantly being active or um, watching particular foods why because these things God says they're his principles and they bring divine health and then we still are able to get sick you can do all the right things and still get sick and that's where we go to the power of the kingdom the healing of God can somebody say amen come on let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ the basis of our healing is based on three things the first one is the name of God the name of God we just read his his name is a healer 
the name and the nature of God he is a healer God doesn't just call himself by Jehovah Rapha you know like we call people with names we give them names uh you know when when parents are expecting kids and they're all which name is the cutest which name is the coolest which name God doesn't do that God only chooses a name that reflects a nature that's why God had to change certain people's names because God changed their nature and therefore their names had to be changed so God reveals himself as Jehovah Rapha God that heals you that means that is his nature that's who he is it's interesting God didn't reveal to, him, uh, to us as a God of tumor a God of arthritis he didn't say I am the God of cancer he says I am the God who heals means God is not the one that gives sickness he's the one that takes it away number two the basis of our healing and that is God's desire or God's compassion in the verse Luke chapter 5 we read where a leper came to Jesus and says Jesus if you are willing please make me clean and Jesus the Bible says touches him and says the following I am willing be clean if you ever wondered if it's God's will to heal people that answers it for everyone God is willing not only he has a nature he has the ability but God also has a motive he has a desire to heal people he doesn't have a desire to punish people with the disease and sickness and for those of you who maybe grew up believing in a more traditional perspective that God doesn't want to heal everyone God doesn't want to heal people he just wants to give sickness to some people to teach a lesson how many of you in your sound mind give your kid an arthritis to teach him a lesson and to do better in school nobody now it's true God redeems in sickness he teaches us things we can learn just like we can we can hear God through a donkey but that's not God's way of speaking to man God's way of speaking to man is through his word and through his spirit but sometimes even he uses a donkey so just because God uses a sickness to teach us something it doesn't make it him an author of that it is his desire to heal people we see in Matthew chapter 14 verse 14 it says Jesus saw multitudes and he was moved with compassion to heal them there's a version of Christianity that says miracles ended with the death of Jesus Christ or with the death of apostles and they have a very appealing evidence for that because Jesus was healing people to convince them he was God and now he convinced everybody he is God he stops healing them there's two problems with that version one not everyone was convinced he was God and number two it nowhere says in the Bible Jesus went healing people and says by the way the reason why I am clearing your skin opening your eyes I need to get everybody a message across I'm God I don't care about your blindness don't care about your leprosy I just want to get my name out there it's nowhere says that in the Bible it's true healings confirm Jesus is God like when Dan is playing piano it confirms he has fingers but Dan is not playing piano to prove to you he has fingers he plays piano because he loves music amen God heals people because he loves people that's all that's his motive he had no head hidden agenda some people he healed never served him he didn't take the healing back God is meddling love with humanity the third reason why healings the basis for our healing is the cross Jesus Christ took the diseases and sicknesses on the cross in Matthew chapter 8 verse 16 and 17 it says on the Sabbath after Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law from a fever in the evening because the Sabbath ended people started to come from everywhere to get healed and the scripture says and he healed them all and Matthew gives an explanation why to fulfill a prophecy that he bore their diseases in other words Jesus had to heal people because he purchased it on the cross now in Matthew chapter 8 Jesus has not died yet Jesus was already cashing out the check from the cross that has not been fully paid for yet can you imagine we are on the other side of the cross where the price has already been paid where Jesus has already taken our sickness upon himself we have a reason to believe for healing that is God's nature God's desire and God's cross where he purchased on the cross our healing can somebody say amen how many of you are grateful to God for the healing power of Jesus Christ Now I want to go a little bit further to talk about how Jesus being our healer, how that translates into the local church. And I want to share with you practically the culture of healing in the local church. 
I've observed this from other ministries and I've observed this in our ministry and especially in the ministries where see healings and I want to mention a few things that create a culture of healing these things most of us already are practicing and we are going to practice them even more in the places where people get healed on a regular basis there's these things they exist in those churches and in those congregations maybe some of you come from congregations where healings don't exist you will actually find the reasons why the first one is people believe that God wants to heal everyone this is very controversial because many people do not believe that God wants to heal everyone and this is the problem if a local church if we will start preaching God doesn't want to heal everyone it's the same thing as putting a needle into somebody's balloon it deflates their confidence because then if God doesn't heal we have a backup plan or we have this thing where it must not been been God's will which means God's will is reduced to my experience I'm so anointed and so powerful that if I pray for you and you don't get healed it must not be God's will that's crazy to reduce God's big will to the level of my experience and if, if somebody argues that it is God's will not to heal everyone but just few people then I can argue that also it's not God's will to save everyone now we understand where this is coming from it's coming to protect because people don't get always healed and we need to give some kind of a justification and so it's easy to just blame it on God just because God wants to save everyone it doesn't mean that everyone gets saved just because God wants to heal everyone that doesn't mean that everyone will get healed there are sometimes things that exist that we don't understand but we cannot blame it on God because in Psalm 103 verse 1 and 3 I'm gonna read this it says the following bless the Lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the Lord O my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your iniquities who heals all your diseases people sometimes come up to me and say where did you get that God wants to heal everyone Psalm 103 forgives all people say he didn't mean all that is a dangerous statement to say because before that he says he forgives all of my iniquities if you don't believe that he heals all of the diseases then you also have a grounds to believe he doesn't forgive all the sins it's in the same body Jesus took the sickness that he took the sin you may say but that Bible doesn't say by his stripes we're healed that everyone is healed yet in the same verse it says he was bruised for our iniquities it didn't say all iniquities it just says iniquities and we know it means all but when it comes to sickness somehow it's just it's just the ones that we get healed from but the ones that don't get healed just to leave God not feeling guilty we just say it must not be his will don't need to defend God God will take care of by himself can somebody say amen I want you to read Matthew chapter 9 verse 39 Matthew chapter 9 verse 39 then Jesus went around all cities and villages teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom healing every sickness and every disease among the people word every twice means every people say what about Job Job is not an expression of invisible God Jesus is we learn about healing not from Apostle Paul's thorn we learn about healing from Jesus Christ Jesus reveals God not Apostle Paul Jesus reveals God not Job Jesus is the revelation of God and in the Gospels four Gospels there is not one instance where someone came to Jesus being sick and Jesus did not heal them not one that means that Jesus Christ that is a standard for us now you may say why don't people get healed we'll get to that in a second but we don't want to reduce the belief in Jesus and the example he left us to the level of our experience oh let me mention inexperience God has given us his truth to raise our experience to the level of his word now reduce his word to the level of our inexperience if you believe God doesn't want to heal everyone then this is what happens you actually don't have to pray you don't have to fast you don't have to take a step you're actually taking a lazy way out you don't even have to pray for people for healing you don't have to believe in anything you don't have to stretch your faith in anything it's just simply God's if God's will is to be done well you read right now Jesus says it is my will it is his desire I understand 
it maybe offends some people but I'm talking about the culture of our church we believe God wants to heal everyone we also are practical we know that not every person probably is going to get healed but the problem is not with God what happens if somebody doesn't get healed number two when people don't get healed we do what Jesus told disciples to do in Matthew chapter Mark chapter 9 disciples were praying for one boy he didn't get healed and Jesus didn't come to the disciples and say guys since you're with me all the anointing is on you it must be God wanting to teach that family something Jesus didn't say that Jesus went healed the boy he came to the disciples and disciples were very wise about it because they said Jesus what did we do wrong Jesus didn't just simply left it blank he says guys there's deeper levels of faith there is deeper levels of prayer and fasting means he challenged them to press into deeper breakthroughs that will enable them to solve bigger problems that is God's solution we don't blame people who didn't get healed we don't even blame ourselves we see every unhealed person as a challenge to go deeper with God to receive greater grace so that we can serve more people for the glory of God If you spend all your time figuring out why it didn't happen or try to justify that it's not God's will, you won't take time to pray and fast to go deeper in God. Because excuses don't produce progress. Excuses produce more excuses and more failures. As a church, when our great uncle, who's the, one of the founders in the church, we stood in faith and I don't know anybody in this world who had that much faith in that man. And when he passed away last year, the whole family and our church family we didn't take it as a blow of defeat we took it as a challenge to pray the more fast the more see God the more humble ourselves before God the more and say God let your kingdom come let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven in heaven there is no sickness in heaven there is no disease and we pray for that can somebody say amen the culture of healing number three is that we learn from those who see miracles. Prophet Java mentioned that where you connect, you collect. I like to say it, anointing comes by association. When you learn from those who see healings, it rubs off on you. There are ministries in the world today that see a lot more healings that we see here and therefore we connect with them. We read their books, we go to their conferences we invite them to our services why because there are a lot of times anointing of God works by association if you constantly watch and listen to people who bash make fun of healings or justify why healings don't happen don't be surprised if they won't be happening around you number four the culture of healing take risks by praying for the people and actually expecting them to be healed we need to set a culture where we expect people to be healed. For me this shifted about four years ago when I started to pray for the sick especially outside of our church on the trips and expect testimonies. At first I didn't expect testimonies because I knew there was none and then when I started to expect testimonies it started they started to show up. As of today it's been about three and a half years where there has not been one service outside of our church where somebody did not testify that they got healed. You expect it. You take risk. You take risk praying and you take a risk of asking the person afterwards because typically this is what we like to do. We pray and then we just kind of put a little ribbon on it. Say Father and, and let your will be done as, as you want and desire. We, we want to exit nicely and not ask them how they feel now just in case they didn't get healed. That doesn't destroy your self-esteem. <laughs> take risks. When you pray for somebody expect and afterwards ask how they're feeling. It's Jesus who healed them, not you. If they didn't get healed, at least they get loved on. You don't walk around with a crushed ego. It wasn't you that was healing them. It was Jesus that was healing them. The next step, number five, is we have to understand in a culture of healing, there is difference between healing and miracles. Healing is progressive. Miracles are instant. Jesus says that those who believe will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. There is a progressive power that happens in healing and miracles many times are instant. In our ministry and ministry of healing and deliverance, we found out this little epidemic 
where people under the anointing they experience healing they actually begin to even testify that they've been healed they go back home and for the next three four days they walk completely fine sometimes they stop taking medicine they feel completely great they even tell their friends they've been healed and after toward a week later they start getting doubts that they've been healed and those doubts lead to fear and fear leads to the fact that they start feeling symptoms appearing again and very soon they find themselves in the same situation needing a healing again i had this week a gentleman who was healed of diabetes for six days completely clear no medicine he said supernatural he said i didn't feel any pain at all and after six days started to have doubts doubts led to fear fear led to the facts of feeling the symptoms quickly went to the medicine and that's not the problem there's nothing wrong with going back to the medicine the problem is when you shift your confession from i was healed to i'm sick and they feel like god didn't really heal him he came up to me and he says can you pray for me because this preacher prayed for me i got healed you need to pray for me so god heals me again i'm like could it be that actually you're still healed you just change your confession he said but if I change my confession to I am healed does that mean I have to stop taking medicine I said that's up to you if you don't feel that you can stop taking medicine continue to take medicine for a little bit until you wean yourself out of it but when God healed you that time God healed you indeed and when the devil came back with doubt you should have stood your ground and even if you would take the medicine don't change your confession the Bible said let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich I had an incident two years ago where my head I started to develop an itch in in my hand and I started to try Google remedies which is not a good idea to do and I asked other people what they would suggest and they suggested things that caused my head to develop an inf my my elbow and my shoulder to develop an infection my hand blew up it just started to just just grow and it became twice my size and next day I started to think that maybe some kind of a cancer is developed in that and so I went to the doctor and the doctor gave me some uh, some things he says it will cause the swelling to go down but he says you need to go to a specialist because you have a problem and so during one of the prayers I felt that God touched me I felt it my hand thing didn't shrink nothing left I just felt that I was touched so what I did is I told my wife I was healed she said let me see your hand she looked at it she says I'm not sure I said I am I stood on that word and uh, that thing shrink within about two weeks itching stopped everything was gone and I told my wife I'm like I told you I was healed a year later in Ukraine exactly the same thing happened I started to notice the same rashes I started to notice the same spots and this is where the doubt comes in says ah you need the healing again and I said listen devil wrong address you are illegal here I reject this in Jesus name two weeks Two weeks the symptoms were still there but it didn't and I'm not saying not to take medicine you have to take medicine if you have to take medicine but having medicine and your positive confession sh shouldn't be the same thing and that thing never came back and if it does come back I know what my position is if Pharaoh comes back after you've been delivered from Egypt it doesn't mean that you're back in Egypt it just means he's coming for his last blow where he will drown in the Red Sea if symptoms come back stand your ground can somebody say amen the ways healing comes and we're going to pray the ways of healing the first way of healing is the Word of God the Bible says he sent his word and healed him God's Word is medicine to our body and medicine never works in a bottle it only works in your body medicine takes time to work and medicine is not racist medicine doesn't care if you're young old black white medicine doesn't even care if you're Christian or atheist medicine only works if you take it God's Word is like medicine and many times God heals people through his word you take God's word like a seed it goes into the soil of your body and you hold it you hold on to it you hold on to the promises of God and then this word it produces the harvest can somebody say amen that is the first way of healing the second way of healing is testimonies revelations 19 to 19 10 it says that the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy meaning every testimony that glorifies Jesus within it contains a prophecy for someone else who hears it no wonder when God created the fruits he put the seed inside of every fruit why so when you finish eating it and after you have been nourished you have enough seeds there to throw into your soil to have another fruit just like that when you ate every healing within it contains a prophecy 
someone else can be healed of this as they hear that many times if you are ill do not talk to your friends who have literally a encyclopedia of stories of how many people died from that disease we know an uncle in Seattle there is one in Nevada they all died three weeks died dead dead like Lazarus and then you're sleeping and you get nightmares and you're not going to die from your disease you're gonna die from their stories and that's why if you are sick the first thing that you have to do not only fill yourself with God's word you gotta literally limit amount of testimonies you get of people who died and surround yourself CBN testimonies Benny Hinn's testimonies hunger generation testimonies TP Josh whoever you find where there is healing fill yourself with healing testimonies number three where healing comes through and that is holy objects holy objects the first one is holy communion holy communion is one of the elements that God uses to bring healing a lot of people take holy communion on a regular basis if you are sick I would encourage you to take holy communion every single day every single day because there is power in holy communion you have to understand man the sin and the curses came through eating Adam ate himself into problems we can eat ourselves out of our sickness by taking holy communion it's interesting because in first Corinthians chapter 11 it says if we don't take communion properly we get sick meaning there is a connection between communion and our health today we're going to take communion there is power when you take holy communion these elements now there is no healing in that wafer and a little bit of juice but it what it represents his healing power the second holy element that you can use is anointing oil either somebody pray for you or somebody minister to you with anointing oil there is healing that comes through that the third one is handkerchiefs or prayer cloths on your way out in the lobby we have a little box with prayer cloths you can take them you can hold it as your point of contact they were prayed for by apostle Jan Chi and our team and you can take it home and many times God will use that to bring healing into your life apostle Paul's belts were used to cast out demons and the fourth holy element that's been used in the Bible twice to bring healing that is water. Naaman was healed in the water and people were constantly being healed in the pool of Bethesda and so we constantly have prayers with anointing water. Why? Because it's biblical. Because God can use any medium and these four he used in the scriptures and we shouldn't be afraid to use them as well to see healing power flow of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number four, way the healing comes, prayer of faith. Prayer of faith is when somebody prays for you in faith. If you are sick, it's very important that you constantly keep positive attitude in the midst of your negative situation. Prayer, not just any prayer. Prayer of pray for me, I'm doing bad. Pray for me brothers and sisters, why? It's just so bad. Not any prayer. Your prayer has to have faith not desperation not panic not I'm gonna die I know you draw sympathy but not God's mercy God is not moved with tears he's moved with faith we were in Florida and we were um, the, the, the family took us on the, on the ocean and in this ocean we were there on this boat and a little plastic piece fell off the boat this boat is as expensive as my house very expensive nice nice boat and the little plastic flew out because the the captain of the ship was driving very fast and we turned around it was so easy to find piece of plastic in an ocean that was in the, this was a base it was about 80 feet deep the reason why it was so easy to find a plastic because plastic has a tendency not to drain the ocean of water or throw a fit against an ocean it can't stop the ocean it just floats on the top of it it's easy to find a plastic that refuses to go down because the water is deep see God always touches people who in the midst of deep problems they tend to float on the top in their faith stay positive in your negative circumstances and prayer of faith will touch your situation can somebody say amen the next way the healing happens five is anointing atmosphere the Bible says the power of God was present to heal means there was an atmosphere of healing sometimes it happens during worship sometimes it happens during prayer where an atmosphere is charged you feel that 
in that moment you should connect right away and receive healing another way the healing happens is through the word of knowledge or other gifts of the Holy Spirit it's when the word of knowledge is given and people quickly connect with that and they feel something touch them at that moment and that is the healing power of Christ that touches their life and last one is through deliverance it's when you get healed after you get delivered the scriptures that I've read here is there was a woman who was bent for many years and Jesus instead of saying be healed he says be loosed and she was freed there was another instance of a deaf and dumb spirit when the spirit was cast out the Bible says the person started to hear speak and the sickness was gone I remember seeing that with Nabil a young man who came to our conference with Wiseman Harry at the track center Nabil had leukemia for two and a half years his insurance would spend seven thousand one hundred dollars every month on his treatment Nabil came for deliverance not actually even for healing he came too late so he wasn't in a prayer line when a prayer was offered for the whole audience Nabil started to feel uneasy in his stomach he wanted to throw up so they brought him to the front and he started to throw up as he threw up he felt light and he felt that he was delivered he went back home didn't think of anything about his illness went to the regular checkups with the doctor and the doctor did another checkup before he gave him more medicine and he did a checkup he was shocked he did another checkup he was shocked he did another checkup he was shocked he says I don't know where you've been what you did I don't know if it's something with the machine but he says listen you have no problem with your blood whatsoever completely healed six months later Nabil got checked again six months later he uh, got checked again he came here he came as I think two years ago and he testified of the glory of God till this day completely clear of leukemia a lot of times behind a sickness is a demon and when you cast out the demon the sickness will leave the demon is the root cause it says in the scriptures in Acts Jesus went healing those oppressed by the devil sickness is demonic oppression that doesn't mean that everybody who's sick has a demon but it is an oppression and if you've been sick you know what I'm talking about today before we take communion and before we pray for this for the sick we are going to break the grip of Satan today we're gonna step upon a snake and a serpent and today we're going to put a notice on every sickness it has overstayed its stay and it's no longer welcome in the body today we are going to take a position in Jesus Christ and today we're going to tell the devil where he belongs under our feet today I believe the healing virtue of Jesus is going to flow in this sanctuary people will be healed today because nothing is impossible to God he's yesterday today and forever the same do you believe in that church do you believe in that people of God Come on somebody. Hi there. If you're like me and you like to click on things, go ahead and click right here and subscribe to our YouTube channel. In this way, we'll be able to send the content to you directly. And each week you'll stay updated with the things that we post. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.